find yourself creating page after page that uses an API call over and over again, whether it's to the same API or a different one, but the format is generally the same, where you like to load the page a certain way and fetch the data in the same way, you're gonna find that you're using a lot of the same code over and over again. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to use a React hook to make this process a lot simpler for us. So if we have 10 web pages that all use the same style of loading data, what we can do is we can create one React hook function that injects all of the same variables for us in each of those pages. If you like what you see here, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's get into it. So here you can see I have a very basic React application where I'm just defining a specific JSON response that I'm getting from an API call. I'm using this open API here that you can take a look at in the description. It just returns some dummy data for you. Again, I have made some descriptions for them using some interfaces with TypeScript so that you can see that the use state variable here for the data is described as my IJSON response. So I always know what it is. You can see that if the page is loading, it just returns some text. If there's an error, then it returns that error. And if the data is null, then it just returns null. Nothing crazy going on here. And if we open up the browser with the React project started, you just refresh it here. You can see that inside of the return, I'm just returning the usernames and the emails that are being returned. So there's nothing crazy here. And you can see that the API is being called correctly. There are no errors. So our goal here is to actually take pretty much everything inside of the use effect and this load data function and get rid of this and turn this into a React hook so that this can be reused throughout many different web pages. I'm using Axios for all of my HTTP requests. You can use fetch or any other library you want. Axios is my preferred method. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new file called use Axios, and that's going to be the name of my hook because that's the library I'm leveraging. Go ahead and define a function called use Axios. And I'm defining this as an arrow function. And right before I define my props, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually have the generic type T the generic type T is going to be defining what data I want returned. You can go ahead and define three variables as state variables. From React, you can define a loading, a data, and an error. And what you can actually do is just go ahead and copy and paste these from the application.tsx file. But if you have to define them, what you're gonna do is you're gonna make the use state true for the loading. For the data, it's going to be a type T. And then for the error, it's just gonna be an empty string. The data by default doesn't have any default value, so it's just gonna be undefined or null. So for our hook, the main body of this hook, we're going to be creating a function called send request. This is gonna send whatever requests we have defined using Axios. This is just gonna be a standard arrow function, nothing fancy here. And inside of it, you're gonna call the set loading to true, just in case you aren't already loading. Next, you're gonna call Axios. And then inside of the Axios, you can see that it's calling for config. We'll come back to that later. Add a then and catch block, then with the response prop and catch with the error prop. Just have them point to empty functions for the moment. Now inside of the Axios call, you can see that it's looking for some config defined as Axios request config uh, any. What you're gonna do actually is just copy this and the first variable inside of our props is gonna be that config with that definition. So actually go ahead and insert that into your function call for use Axios. Then pass in your config inside of the Axios function call. Now inside of the then block, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and set the error to an empty string just in case there was an error previously. And then what you can do is you can set your data to the response.data. So the reason that we do this is we're always going to expect our data to be inside of this data block. So make sure that your response is always defined properly. Inside of the catch block, you can go ahead and just set the error to the error.message for now. Add a finally block that has the function pointing to set loading equal to false. Now that the send request function is done, what we need to do is actually call this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a use effect and we're gonna have an empty dependency array for now because we want this called just as it loads. Inside of it, you can go ahead and send the request. Now what we can do actually is if we don't want this request to get fired off right away, we wanna have control over it, we can add a bool value to our function call that allows us to determine if we wanna call it right away. So go ahead and pass in a boolean called like load on start 
And you can actually give this a default value of true. That way it's an optional value. And then in the use effect, you can check to see that this Boolean is true or not. Next, let's go ahead and add a function called request. And all this does is call the send request. This function will be provided just in case you don't have that bool set to true. At the bottom, go ahead and return an array. First, pass in the loading, then the data, then the error, and then finally the request function. Now the hook is almost complete. The last thing we have to do is tell this function what its return values are. So what you're going to do is right after the function props, you're going to define what this returns. What this is going to return is a bool, then a type T or undefined, then a string, and then an empty arrow function pointing to void. Now React will know that this is a hook and these are the four different variables pass into the array. So we can go back to our application function now and actually replace all of the code we have there with this hook definition. So inside of my application, I'm going to copy the config being passed into the Axios function here, this object with the method and the URL. I'm going to copy that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase everything above the if loading. So what we're going to do is we're going to call a const and then pass in the four variables that we defined, the loading, data, error, and request. We're going to make this equal to use Axios. We're going to pass in our IJSON response into our generic type. So we know that data is now defined properly. And then inside of it, we're going to pass in our config that we copied. And we aren't going to pass in anything for the load on start because it's defaulted to true. Now, if I save this and I go back to my browser and I hit refresh, you can see that everything is called properly and there are no errors, the hook works perfectly fine. So you can actually just stop this video right here if that's all you need to see. But if you wanna stick around for a minute, let's go ahead and play around with the request function by making the load on start false. So now that we made this false, if I save this and go back to the web page, and you're gonna notice that because the use effect send request wasn't triggered, that the page is stuck on loading. So let's go ahead and play around with this. Go back to the application, add a use effect, and all you're gonna do here it's called the request function. If you save that and go back to the web page and refresh, you're going to notice that everything loads properly now. But I want to make this so that I actually don't have to call it this way. I want it to show that my data is null before I call my request because I don't want it to be stuck in that loading state. So all you have to do is go back to your use Axios. And what we're going to do is we're going to add an else block here that just basically says if we aren't loading on the start, just go ahead and set the loading to false so that we can get a default data being equal to null. I want that to show up instead of just the loading. So if I get rid of this uh, request now and go back to the web page, you'll see that the data was null. So now this is working the way we expect it to. So if we uncomment that and go back, you'll see that it switches back to normal. And there you have it. There's all the ways you can manipulate your use Axios hook. Uh, I hope you found this educational and I hope it saves you a lot of time so you don't have to rewrite code. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Or if you're feeling really generous, you can buy me a coffee to see some more videos. Okay guys, see you in the next one.